Is anything cooler than painting black and white? No! Well, as luck would have it, today I'm presenting a video on just that topic. Black and white. Just two of them. Also, Vallejo deck tan. Those will be the three colors that I'm using today to create this black and white copy of this. I chose a Black Templar Space Marine, naturally. Um, pretty easy topic, but it gave me a chance to zero in more on the play of light and shadow. I uh, had the opportunity to add some drop shadows to this, and I really wanted to create this video so I could show people um, how I place an emphasis on certain volumes and how I'm seeing shadows and just how I'm imagining a dynamic lighting situation. So why not break it down into black and white? To prepare for that, I wanted to feed my mind with some mental stimulus. So I had a little bit of a photography session. First I photographed the model underneath a single lamp in just its bare state so I could see how the light was playing across the semi-gloss plastic surface. Then I primed the figure, again, placing it back in the same position as best I could, but I wanted to have this fixed perspective of the light source falling down on the black armor. And then for the third experiment, I placed a sheet of white paper underneath the model. The power armor is a semi-gloss, plast ceramic, plastic, future material semi-gloss. Um, so there's a certain amount of light that bounces up off of the ground and the Space Marine's armor is going to be affected by that. So that's what I was trying to simulate with this piece of paper underneath the model. I know it's, it's very subtle, but there are certain areas like the lower side of his rib cage and his elbow pad where you can see there is a certain amount of light being reflected up off of the ground. So we'll limit that to more of a neutral tone. I won't bring that up to my brightest maximum brightness. Um, but I just wanted to share you these pictures with you because although I, I'm not going to stick to this 100%, this is the realm of imagination and creativity, but these pictures will certainly be providing a level of guidance. Um, always the rule of cool is number one, and then we'll make up the rest after that. So just paint what looks best but try to maintain this fixed perspective on the figure for this exercise. To start off, I had Vallejo Black, Deck Tan, and Liquitex Titanium White on my palette. I mixed them all together, just forming various shades of gray, going from black all the way up to white. And I'll also pull some colors off to the side and mix and match here and there where I see necessary. But I started from this black base, and sketched in just the very, the brightest areas, the, where the, the light is falling heaviest, where I see some of these white reflections in the photograph. I wanted to make sure that I don't lose that area. So I wanted to lock that light situation in and this would help to kind of be my guide so things didn't move around on me too much. And this is also where I added in the drop shadow. You can see the sword going across the backpack um, it's a nice opportunity right there, as well as the purity seal that I added flowing back across his shoulder pad. That one will be even harder to spot, but we're working in the ways of subtlety, my friends. All in all, at this step, we're focusing on the key areas and the drop shadows. Once I'm happy with that, I wanted to pick out a few of the other materials present. I know the Black Templars, the shoulder pads, that field is normally white, so I wanted to limit the depth of shadow there. I don't want to go all the way down to pure black. I want it to read a, being a lighter tone of color and also the uh, purity seals. I wanted that to read as a different material. I had a chance to work some texture in there, some horizontal striations. The goal is to make things interesting with a variety of texture and various hues. That's why I added so much battle damage to the model. Not only does it look cool, but it also gives me some interesting edges to work with. Once that main area was established, I set about mimicking that light that would be bouncing up off of the ground in an ever so subtle way. So I started painting in on the sides of the ribs, the bottom side of the, the elbow pad, anywhere that I saw fit, 
I can be certain that the facing of his shin that's angled towards the ground, as well as the lower side of his knee pads, some of those angle joints, all of those would be catching just a little bit of a reflection. With that stage on the armor completed, I could put a little attention towards the pauldrons and the purity seals, just layering up the pauldrons to a nice pure coat of Vallejo deck tan. This is done in many, many thin coats um, using a very large brush so I could affect as much of the surface area at one time. But gradually, as I worked that up, many, many thin layers, once I was, I was happy with that, maintaining the existence of the drop shadow from the purity seal, I could start bringing a little bit of white right around the purity seal where the, the light is coming in from a certain angle and hitting the helmet, hitting the shoulder pad at the same angle. Again, using the picture as a reference, I was able to break up the monotony of gray with a slightly lighter coat of gray. With the pads complete and a base coat of the general light situation on the model, it was time to start pulling things up and making them a little more extreme. So I was using lighter and brighter amounts of Vallejo deck tan. Again, I'm, I'm mixing and matching. Um, I want to point out that the highlights on the upper portion of the model will generally be brighter than the lowest portion. We want a general gradient of light to dark going from the model's toes up to its helmet. So just controlling the volume and the brightness of those highlights as you're moving upwards, just keep that in mind. These very small portions of paint, less is more. And especially when I want something to read as black armor, it can quickly be overtaken by all these, all these gray tones. So if the highlights are very small, sharp, and abrupt, I think it will get more of the look I'm after of a reflective black versus just a gray suit of armor. Um, but yeah, just pull up those, those areas of intensity and remember to keep everything locked in place with that fixed perspective. Hit those key points, you have your, your brightest places in mind, so really focus on those and I'm just adding another layer of highlights to the whole situation. With the big boy brush stage complete, it was time to break down to a finer brush for some finer highlights. And you guessed it, even smaller portions. But I'm attending to the fine edge highlights. Even uh, every one of those areas it's, it can be its own gradient. Um, at this point on the, the scale of paint, I'm moving to pure Vallejo deck tan, and then even small portions of white mixed into that or where appropriate, generally in the upper area of the model. This is also the point where I started pulling out all those little scratches and dents and bullet holes and knife marks on his armor. It's a very fine line, pressing ever so slightly, so I could just gently illustrate on top of the model in some areas, creating a more superficial battle damage, as well as edge highlighting and pulling some faint lines away from the uh, deeper marks that I carved in with my X-Acto blade. Then, and only then, would I dare pull out the pure Liquitex Titanium White, adding the smallest tiny dots and slashes. I really want to limit the amount of this paint that I place on the armor because it's also helping me with the reflective materials like the, the metals, the chain on the sword, his, his well, the chain on his... Uh, bottom of his sword as well. You got the chainsaw blade and then the actual sword chain. 40k. And also his gun. So being a metallic surface, I wanted that to be the most highly reflective object on the model. So I used a little more white on the metallic areas and a lot less on uh, those, those key points, but I still wanted to pick them out with very small dots to make sure that I could set the gradient to the max. Um, I'm also, throughout this whole process, going back and forth, sweeping shadows onto the model, wherever the light needs to be controlled, referencing the photo, said that a million times, black lining as well to make sure every crack and crevice was well defined and extra crisp. And also the color black was used very sparingly. Mostly I want this to be all, you know, very subtle, various hues of gray, so the same uh, notion is correct as with the 
final white highlights, that's as bright as I can go. So black is, is the maximum shadow and I don't have any blue paint or anything to really accent the depth. So just use the black sparingly. Following all that tedium, I could really uh, unfurl a bit and free my mind. Dare I say, unchain myself upon the blacktop. Cement needed to be worked up. And in order to create a, again, a variety of textures, get this kind of asphalt stone look, I just blended badly. It was very liberating after trying to get these smooth gradients, just using the large brush again, using the, the side of the, the bristles to kind of absorb some of what I was laying down and lay these irregular layers of paint down, always building in a gradient and making sure that there's a shadow growing from where his foot is connected to the surface. Um, but yeah, basically I just slapped some paint around in a gradiated fashion and had a good time. But then it was back to the tedium because no Black Templar is complete without the Iron Cross upon his shoulders. I chose this faction because they don't use tactical markings, and this being an assault marine, I believe I would have had to try and freehand the, the assault marking, which is like an X with an arrow on the end of each X, so the little uh, Black Templar's cross seemed easier to me. I always go the easiest creative route, my student. But anyways, the freehands were applied. Um, watch my video intro to freehand. If you have some questions about building this up, suffice to say, you can see the process there. I'm just drawing a little plus sign and then kind of pulling a V shape off of those, making sure to balance everything in an equal and opposite style. Again, this, this is tricky. This is a little more advanced, but I believe in you. And there he is, full rotating glory. Oh yes, oh yes. Notice that I painted the edge of the base a deep gray again as a way of preserving which areas were at the maximum depth being painted black. This is a very fun experiment. Um, this is only the second black and white model that I've ever painted. Um, I encourage you to try it yourself. Go monochromatic. Paint something in all sepia tones, for example, or maybe just all in hot pink. Who knows what kind of light situation the model is in, where it's completely covered in, in one tone. But Breaking things down to this, this more simple level and really thinking deeper about your values, the reflections, the play of light, will only add, it will only make your colored work better. So it's, it's a really fun exercise to break something down into the black and white realm. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me. Please log your questions and concerns in the comments below. And until the next video, stay unchained. We've got to paint the world, brother man, sister woman, world child, being of the stars, master of metal.